Hi, and welcome to Larry Talks Tech. Today I want to talk to you about facial recognition and uh, some ways to have some countermeasures against that. But before I get into that, I kind of like to give you uh, some background of how I got into this. Um, it all started when the Big Sur got released. I installed it, and I found out really how much uh, information was being fed back to Apple. I mean, uh, uh, besides telemetry, uh, Apple's harvesting information uh, from our iCloud accounts, from email accounts. Uh, and when you're in that ecosystem, uh, they can pretty much tell you when you get up, when you go to bed, what kind of sleep you had, health information, uh, uh, how you got to work, <laughs> you know, what, what you're watching on TV, and on and on and on and on. Uh, a little scary. Uh, so then I started looking at uh, Google and Facebook and Amazon and Twitter, and it certainly appears to me that each of these big tech guys uh, have a profile on each of us. I mean, golly, that, that sounds like a, almost like Orwell's 1984, you know, kind of getting into, into that realm of, of uh, surveillance. Uh, instead of the government being big brother, it's big tech. Um, yeah, so it's pretty scary. So uh, uh, I try to figure out, my goodness, I mean, what the heck are they doing with all that? And uh, there's a ton of data. Uh, what are they doing with it? And, and uh, you know, if they're selling it, uh, harvesting it, selling it, uh, giving it away, or if it's stolen, if they didn't grab one more bit of information, your digital footprint gets larger with, EV, with every transa transaction or every movement of the data. And also, there's a huge security involved there because uh, Apple and uh, Google, Facebook, and all these guys uh, probably have pretty secure systems. But how secure is the system to the person receiving that information or the company receiving that information? And, and, and it gets that way all the way downstream every time that there's a transaction. So there's the, the liability uh, and a chance that your information could fall in the wrong hands uh, gets even worse. And then the ability to aggregate that data uh, isn't such a bad thing. Uh, uh, I can understand it for marketing purposes. That you know, the, you know, from, we're looking at our data and we're seeing that people are interested in X or they don't like Y, and you know, the hairstyle should be this because we're seeing that, and people should be wearing these type of clothes. Blah blah. Who cares? But that's all marketing stuff. I get that. The problem is, it can go deeper than that. It can go, it can go beyond marketing. And uh, uh, that's where things get, get serious. So I had to sit down and, and think about what to do about this. And what it looks like to me uh, in terms of data, uh, it kind of breaks out to three types of data uh, that I'm concerned about. The first is the, well, whether, whether I'm concerned about it or not, is three types of data, uh, and we'll, we'll I'll show you the level of concern as I talk about it. Uh, the first one really is, is all the data they've already got. So, I mean, at the end of the day, there's not much you can do about that. It's there, okay? I, I don't think that's going to get expunged anytime soon. Uh, the second group of data is that I really don't care that, that, that they know. I mean, I, I don't care that... Uh, they know I eat Rice Krispies, or I, or I like to watch the reruns, uh, a rerun of Game of Thrones, you know. Uh, 
uh, I don't, who cares? You know, I, I drive a German car. Okay, well, good. You know that. It's super. Uh, who cares? Right. But when it gets to my personal data, uh, where I'm talking to a lawyer about my will or, or, or uh, sending things, documents back and forth about that, uh, or if I'm uh, talking about me my medical history, finances, or just having a conversation with one of my friends, a personal conversation, none of that stuff uh, needs to be in big text menu of things they have on me. All right. So, so I figured I've got to control that piece of it. The first two things I can't control. I don't care about if I control the middle one and I can't control the first one, but the one I can grab uh, at least a piece of and as much of a chunk as I can is my personal information. So I started thinking about what I could do about that. And I figured I could approach it from three different areas. One is facial recognition and uh, facial recognition software. And that's not me using it, it's that's being used on me and, and us. And I think that it, it could evolve into something. It's not great now, but I think it could evolve into something. Its use isn't great. It could evolve into something that's... that's uh, pretty serious in fact might even be dangerous and uh, uh, I don't think there's a might to it it certainly could be dangerous uh, uh, and that's 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 not good so so we're going to get into that in, in a few minutes so I figured I facial recognition definitely is one I was going to hit my uh, internet usage and how I'm, how I'm using it, what machines I'm using it from here in my, my office, uh, how, how, do I, how do I control that where I don't have a big brother over my shoulder if I don't want him there. And, and finally email and, and uh, nailing that down. So and making that more secure, at least as far as my personal information goes. So that's, that's the angle, that's the approach uh, that, I, that I've taken. And, and in the future weeks and months, uh, I'm going to dedicate a number of videos and articles on LarryTalksTech.com, a, a shameless plug for my website, LarryTalksTech.com, and uh, uh, they'll all be dedicated to really gaining privacy and uh, narrowing down your digital footprint. So that's what uh, you'll be seeing from me in, in, in the weeks and months ahead. And uh, facial recognition is the stepping stone to that. So that's the background. So let's, let's move into that, facial recognition. In terms of privacy, facial recognition is less an issue about data harvesting and more about collateral access to your data. Microsoft, Google, Apple, and Amazon all have and use facial recognition software. It's a great tool to use when you have lots of photos and you want to uh, search for items like, you know, pictures of Uncle Fred or random cats and uh, birds or buildings with large arcs or something like that. In any event, uh, that's good and it's a helpful tool. But there is a darker side to facial recognition. Here are a couple of articles uh, that'll help point that out. One is from The Vice, and it's uh, on their website, and it's researchers who want to protect your selfies from facial recognition. Here they're talking about companies like Clearview AI that uh, are scraping social media sites to build massive face databases in which they can train their algorithms that are then sold to police department stores and uh, sports leagues. Now, from a recent New York Times article, it looks like they've got a little more carried away than that. Uh, Clearview AI claims to have, have billions of, of online photos they've, they've taken. Uh, now, the problem isn't just the photos that are a concern. The real problem is why take them in the first place? Uh, think about it. These photos are useless unless they have a database to connect to. And they do. These pictures... Uh, now become a search key 
for our data profiles. Another uh, article uh, from POGO, that's the uh, Project on Government Oversight, talks about facial recognition threats to civil rights and civil liberties should be of great concern to lawmakers and the general public alike. That this surveillance tool has gone almost wholly unregulated is concerning both because of its potential for abuse and because its algorithmic biases make it inherently more likely to misidentify people of color like black Americans, Asian Americans, Native Americans, and Pacific Islanders. Misidentifications can lead to improper police action such as stops, searches, and even arrests targeting innocent people. But here's another one. Imagine that some guy sees a girl on the street, takes a picture of her with his camera, uploads it to a website, and the data that comes back to him uh, can be something like this. Her name, her last known address, her phone number, where she works, what she likes to eat, her favorite music, what she reads, where she parties at, her cat's name, the, root, the routines uh, she has during the day, uh, and so on. Our guy in this example might just be curious, or he might be a stalker, a serial rapist, or a bill collector, or so on. Where is there clear and reasonable expectation of privacy on the Internet? Well, guess what? Well, I think the answer is obvious. There isn't any, and that's a problem. Another problem is that unregulated facial recognition, as you can see here, and from some of these examples, is just inherently dangerous. Well, okay, so now we can see that uh, uh, facial recognition does offer some challenges for your privacy. It can be a key to open up database files easily, and those database files are ones that have been collected uh, um, about you. While doing some background uh, work and, and some investigation, frankly, on, on a whole other topic, I stumbled across, so it is an excellent countermeasure to facial recognition and a way to protect yourself. It's an app called Fox, and uh, for you English history buffs, you remember Guy Fox. Well, that's the that's who it's named after. Okay, so how it works is it makes a, a pixel level changes to your image that are invisible to the human eye. This process is called cloaking. When someone tries to use cloaked images to build a facial recognition model, the cloaked images will teach the model a highly distorted version of what makes you look like you. When someone tries to present the model an uncloaked image of you, the model will fail to recognize you. Okay, pretty cool. So basically, uh, it's almost like a Trojan horse. Uh, although it doesn't damage anything, it's it, the facial recognition software is learning, uh, and you're teaching it something that uh, is the Trojan horse. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that is is it really you? So uh, uh, it's pretty slick and uh, pretty easy to use. So you 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 download it from Sand Labs, who who were the people who. Uh, did this and this is the uh, again this is from the University of Chicago and when you open it and it takes a I mean I've, I've got a, a MacBook Pro with 16 uh, gigs of uh, RAM and a solid state drive and it takes it a bit to open up and about when you when you think about uh, uh, saying wow I'm gonna close this out because it's not working. It opens, so <laughs> so so it it can it can take a bit. So be patient. Let it open up, and you can see here uh, this is a the uh, little box that that you get when it's open, and uh, you click the select images. So you you take it to where wherever you have your images stored and select the images that that you want uh, it to protect. Uh, select those. Come back. Hit the run protection. And what it'll do, it'll put the protected cloaked images 
in the same area where your uh, real images came from. And uh, uh, again, it's 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 uh, pixel level. You won't see the difference, but uh, uh, it is there to the AI of uh, the our big big brother, uh, big tech. Uh, their AI. It's 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 in there, uh, working for you. And he, here is an example of it. So you got the original on the left and the cloak version on the right. And uh, you can see uh, there's hardly any change, if any change at all. Well, all right. Uh, that's kind of where we are uh, with facial recognition. I think the uh, countermeasure here is pretty effective. Uh, the more images of yourself you upload uh, that are cloaked, the more the facial recognition software will learn about a alternate you, <laughs> or alternate versions of you, and be less likely to find the real you when someone tries to use an ac the actual uncloaked photograph. So, and certainly the cloaked photograph uh, isn't going to work either. So anyway, that's that's. Uh, that is how that works. So, so for uh, how to get the software, you can you can download it from Sand Labs. Uh, I'll have the information in the in the uh, video notes. Uh, you can also uh, f uh, go to Larry Talks Tech, and uh, under the same title as this video, you can, you can find the uh, article written on on the blog there, and it has all the source information and uh, the place to download. Uh, uh, Fox, the Fox app. Okay. Well, thank you very much for watching today, and uh, please uh, like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more of these. And I hope you come back soon. So uh, we've got more articles uh, on this vein, and I uh, hope, you, hope you like them. Let me know.